Welcome back to session 18 on plane stress. This is our third portion, our third part. And in this portion, what we're going to focus on doing is calculating in plane principle stresses. We've talked about how we can find them through numerical means and what they look like with their normal stresses present and zero shear stress. But now we're going to kind of introduce the derived method of calculating out these um, maximum or minimum in-plane principal stresses with um, kind of an algebraic or I guess trigonometric formula that we can use. So if we look at how to calculate out uh, sigma x prime from an originally given state of stress, right, with a sigma x, a sigma y, and a tau xy, and we have this general uh, transformation equation that came from actually from last session, from session 17, and we derived it by looking at a slice and equilibrium on a triangle. And when we are looking for a max or a min in plane principle stress, we want this value to be a max or maybe a min. So what does that mean? That means, well, take a derivative, set it equal to zero. So here we go. We can take the derivative of this expression and then set it equal to zero. And when we do that, we can get an expression that tells us what the angles might be that are associated with this condition where the derivative of x prime, or sigma x prime, Okay, with respect to the angle is, um, is, is equal to zero. So performing a little bit of algebra, okay, we can, we can get down to this expression and we can say that this theta here is associated with an orientation for max or, or min uh, principal uh, stress in a plane. And this equation could, could be, you know, kind of useful. Uh, when we introduce more circle, it's kind of this highlight of this course, which we'll do on our next, next session. Okay, you're probably like, ah, I don't need these equations anymore, right? But we're showing mathematically how they're derived. And, you know, uh, even Hibbler in one portion of the book says, hey, you can go ahead and um, program these in your calculator so that you you know how to calculate them you know you can just plug in variables and, and and it will spit it out for you sure if you want to do that that's that's fine nothing stopping you from doing that but it's still good to have an idea right does what i'm calculating make sense and when you do these formulas and you have a tangent okay you also got to be a little bit careful right sometimes about okay which quadrant am i in if the numerator is negative and the denominator is positive right it gets a little bit confusing at least for me to keep track of um, what data is when you're doing these 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 tangents. Okay. Oh, um, right. So this is actually uh, equal to tau x y sigma x minus sigma y divided by two. All right. Sorry, it got cut off here. All right. And then if we uh, plot uh, a little bit, um, sorry, it got cut off here. Maybe I can move just temporarily. I'll move. Whoops. Okay, so you can see that's what it is. All right, but I'm going to move this back now. Hopefully I didn't mess up anything with my... Oh, let's see if I can... Oh, no, I didn't mess up. <laughs> All right, here, let's get this. That was really maybe not the greatest idea. Okay, but... All right, here we go. So, um... We have described now uh, these orientations, all right? And now we can make a little plot, all right, for what we were discussing. How do you go and calculate these angles if you're given the tangent of, of something? And in this case, right, we have two tau xy over sigma x minus sigma y prime, all right? Or tau xy over sigma x minus sigma y divided by two. So we could put the tau xy 
on the opposite side. And we can put the sigma x minus sigma y divided by 2, all right, over here um, on the adjacent side. And we can uh, do a similar thing on the other side when we go and we flip over because we're going to have a negative denominator here and a negative uh, numerator here, right? So they're both the same thing. They cancel out. And now we go from quadrant one to quadrant three. And uh, if we want to figure out the magnitude here of one of these sides, we, we can, right? It's just the square root of this opposite squared plus this adjacent squared, right? Also keep in mind that this is an angle of 2 theta. This is 2 theta p right in here, okay? So we can plug theta into the original stress transformation equation. It gets to be kind of big, a little bit messy, right, as we see here, right? But we don't have to do any, like, or super complex, right? We can figure out, okay, what's the cosine, right, of this? It's just going to be the adjacent over the hypotenuse, okay, which is what you see here. And what's this one? This is just the opposite over the hypotenuse, right? And I called it blah because I didn't want to write it out again, okay? Just like here. And so now we have an expression for sigma x prime, okay? And uh, we can come up with an expression for sigma y prime, right? Which would be the, the my, put up with a minus sign there. And we can say that we have sigma 1, 2, right? So these are our values for our max and our min in plane principal stresses uh, given with one nice algebraic formula, right? So instead of, you know, going through the co-lab and all that, and maybe at this point for session 18, question 1, and session 18, question 2, you already skipped to this. You're like, I'm just going to use these equations. That's, that's okay, all right? Still hoping that... You know, some of you would have gone through and and um, looked at how the collab uh, leads to the same conclusions. Not the collab, but the the plotting of the individual angles. Okay, and then look, spotting those graphs and looking at where we have zero shear stress or where we have maximum and or minimum principal stresses. Right, how we find those on those plots as well. But this is kind of the shortcut of doing that. And now it's an opportunity for you to, to apply um, some, you know, foreknowledge in terms of uh, their, their knowledge that we've developed previously, right, for determining the state of planar stress on an element. Okay, so we have this cylinder here, and this is uh, being twisted with uh, a, an applied torque, and it's also being pulled um, with an extension uh, a tensile force, uh, P, all right? So you figure out the state of stress as given here, and then we're asking what is the larger of the two in-plane principal stresses? So use the equation that we just described, that principle, that state of, um, with, with this, uh, with the appropriate values here, right? Maybe there's not a sigma Y, right? It doesn't look like it, not here. So you know, we're going to have a sigma X and, um, Maybe a tau xy, okay, in this corner, and plug those in, and then get the, the result. All right, that concludes this portion of session 18.